Okay. So now let's go ahead. What are we doing? We are doing refund. What is refund? Excess amount duty paid. We can get as refund, but normally we know that this is indirect tax, and indirect tax man normally you don't get refund because and by actually who has paid the tax you don't come to know. So normally this amount goes to consumer welfare fund, and this is called as doctrine of unjust enrichment. But then we have studied situation which is exception very important. Now we have studied few situation which is exception to doctrine of unjust enrichment. That is, in such scenario, the amount will be received by the person who has paid the tax or by the importer, as the case may be. But it will not go to the consumer welfare fund. Am I clear? Am I clear? And those scenarios were what? Those scenarios were this one. Point number four that refund to importer or exporter if the duty incidence is not passed. If the I have not passed on the burden to somebody else. If I'm an importer or I'm an exporter and if I have not passed the burden to somebody else, then I am eligible for the refund. Second, if I have imported something for my personal purpose, when I have imported something for my personal purpose, the question of forwarding, the question of forwarding the burden. Transferring the burden to somebody else will not come to, to picture. Only I have paid the duty, so I'm eligible for the refund. Third, refund of export duty, which we're going to study below right now. Next, excess of duty paid by importer if duty has paid excess duty. Sorry, if importer has paid excess duty, the duty paid in excess by the importer before an order. Permitting clearance of goods for home consumption is made where such excess payments. See, uh, it is like it is clearly that I have paid excess duty before order for home consumption, and such excess payment of duty is clearly evident on the bill of entry, or the duty actually paid is reflected in self as bill of entry. Then in that case, I am eligible for the refund. Am I clear? And for that. We had come to question number three, which was that that I had imported thousand units, but I have paid duty for thousand two hundred. So when I have imported only thousand, I can transfer the burden. I can shift the burden to somebody else only for thousand units. When I don't have extra two hundred units, how can I transfer the burden to somebody else? So for that two hundred, I am eligible for refund, and that amount will not go to consumer welfare fund. Clear to you? Okay. Let's go ahead. Now, refund of export duty. When will you get refund of export duty? See, an export duty paid on goods exported will be refunded if following all the three conditions are satisfied. Goods are re-imported within one year. You are exported and you have paid export duty, but now the goods are re-imported, then you are eligible for refund. Second, the goods are returned otherwise than by way of sale. It does not come to me by way of sale. No, it is not written by way of sale. It has come to me otherwise than by way of sale. I had done export sale. I had paid export duty, but the person who had purchased from me has returned the goods back to me. So I am eligible for whatever duty I have paid. And refund claim is made within six months from a date when proper officer has made an order. For clearance of the goods for re-importation, when proper officer has made an order for clearance of goods for re-importation, from that date within six months, I need to file an application. I need to claim the refund. Again, there we had one year. Normal, if I say normal refund, if I paid excess import duty, am I clear? I normal in case of normal. I, Excess whatever I've paid within one year, what I've paid, I need to claim. I need to file an application here in case of export duties within six months. From which date? From the date of clearance by proper officer of goods for re-importation. Clear? Can I go ahead? Now, question number four. Mark it important. A very good question. Question number four. Really good question. What is question number four? State whether the principle of unjust enrichment will be applicable in the following cases or not. That means how many cases are there? Eight. Eight scenarios are given, and they're asking us whether 
application or whether principle of unjust enrichment will be applicable that means if i am saying that i want this refund will this refund i will get or that refund will go to consumer welfare fund and to get the refund i need to prove it am i clear let's see very good points we'll go question wise and then i have given the answers below am i clear refund of duty paid on raw materials which have been captively consumed see i have paid duty on raw materials and those raw materials have been captively consumed i hope you know what is captively consumed see raw material i am using that raw material to make finished goods and finished goods i'm going to sell in the market am i clear that means i have not purchased raw material and i have sold the raw material i have purchased raw material i've paid duty on that i've captively consumed it i've manufactured finished goods and i am now selling finished goods i hope you're with me i hope you're with me now let's read the logic if you ask me with the, before reading the answer suppose we don't know the answer and this question comes in the exam logically think if 100 rupees i have paid on raw material on that 100 rupees i've paid 10 rupees as import duty the my costing will be 110 and in that 110 i will add this is my raw material cost huh? in 110 i will add my further production cost i will add my profit margin together it comes supposed to 200 rupees and then i'm selling that in 200 rupees the 200 include that 10 rupees which i had paid as duty on raw material which is now shifted to somebody else the burden is shifted to somebody else so now actually the buyer who has purchased that finished good from me he has paid that 10 rupees from his pocket now if i say that the 10 rupees may say i had to pay only 8 rupees i have paid extra 2 rupees i want refund of the 2 rupees will department give me the refund no department will say ma'am you paid 10 rupees but you have taken the 10 rupees from x person <coughs> sorry that means x person's pocket the 10 rupees has gone that means that person is eligible for refund not you so in short this excess whatever 2 rupees you have paid that 2 rupees will go to the consumer welfare fund your doctrine of unjust enrichment will be applicable see let's the answer i hope you got the concept yes answer is yes doctrine of unjust enrichment will be applicable the doctrine of unjust unjust enrichment is applicable of refund of duty paid on raw material which has been captively consumed as has been judicially decided in the case of solar pesticides private limited the and by supreme court which court supreme court the apex apex means supreme court the highest topmost court held that mark this is the crux held that duty burden can be passed on directly or indirectly see directly is i purchased raw material 100 rupees i paid 10 rupees duty and i have sold that raw material that is directly indirectly i purchased raw material converted into finished goods and now i am selling finished goods this is indirectly that means the duty burden can be passed on directly as well as indirectly in case of raw materials which is captively consumed and finished goods manufactured there from are sold what am i selling i am selling finished goods i have told you now my raw material cost 100 rupees assume duty on raw material is 10 rupees total 110 further production cost suppose 80 rupees my profit suppose 10 rupees total comes to what 200 rupees so when i'm selling and this is my selling price this 200 rupees includes this duty element of 10 rupees am i clear in case of raw material which is captively consumed and finished goods manufactured there from a soul it can be said that incidence of duty has been passed on so the same is included in the value of finished goods it's there that 200 includes that 10 rupees which i have paid on raw material as duty therefore 
the doctrine of unjust enrichment is applicable in this case. Doctrine of unjust enrichment is applicable. Am I clear? Am I clear? So let's read this question below. XYZ Limited imported capital goods and used them in its first capital goods machineries. See, raw materials is inputs and capital goods are machineries both are used for manufacturing finished goods i buy raw material to make it or to convert into finished goods and i buy capital goods machineries which will help me to convert my raw material into finished goods okay xyz limited imported capital goods and used them in its factory to produce goods for sale upon discovery of an error by which excess import duty had been paid on the said capital goods, it filed a claim of refund. As regards unjust enrichment, it contended what was their say that the capital goods were not sold. I don't buy capital goods for sale, I buy capital goods for converting my raw metal into finished goods. The capital goods were were not for sold and hence the principle of unjust enrichment will not apply to a refund of import duty paid on capital goods this is what is the person who has filed an application is trying to say and that in any case the price see this line now this is this line is going to confuse you people that in any case the price of the finished goods manufactured in the factory remains the same before and after the import and installation of capital goods. What is the person trying to say? The boss, I have imported capital goods. I have paid import duty on capital goods. I have not sold it one. Secondly, what is trying to say? That my finished goods price before importing and installation capital goods and after importing and installation of capital goods is same. That means he's trying to say that because of the importation and installation of capital goods, the price has not gone affected. Boss, how does that matter? That is your business strategy. You just keep on, cannot keep on changing the selling price. Suppose I have purchased X thing for my business and immediately if I keep on increasing my selling price of the product, that is not practically possible it is not like that so that price cannot be a factor which will determine i hope you get a point suppose i'm doing this recording my recording is there suppose i buy a camera then immediately i say that okay i purchased a camera for my recording and camera is what a capital goods for me so now camera cost has increased so i need to increase my pen drive cost no it does not link like that am i clear okay this was the ground which was given by the person who has filed the application. Now let's see the case. Examine the merits of this contention with the support of a case law. Boss, honestly speaking, these eight points which you are going to study are really important. And this eight point can confuse you people if you are not conceptually clear. Okay. Okay, first before reading the answer. I hope you know the answer. Boss, Capital goods, anything, burden can be transferred directly as well as indirectly. So you have purchased capital goods, you have paid import duty on capital goods and that is your cost. You'll be adding it to the cost. So automatically, the burden will shift directly as well as indirectly. So what's written over here? The incidence of duty can be passed directly or indirectly. But the capital goods are used for manufacture, the duty paid on their import will go into the costing of the goods manufactured and sold. I will add that to my cost and they and can thus be passed on to the buyers. Am I clear? Whatever I will pay, whatever I am paying, that is my cost. Whatever I am paying, that is my cost, be the value of capital goods, be duty on capital goods, all is my cost and I will add it to my product. The large bench of tribunal in this case has held that doctrine of unjust enrichment will be applicable in case of imported capital goods used captively for manufacture of excisable goods. 
as regards the relevance of the fact that price remained same before and after capital goods were imported the larger bench also clarified that uniformity in the price before and after assessment does not lead to inevitable conclusion that duty burden has not been passed by saying this that my price before import my price after import is same that is not that is not the fact on which you can take a call that i have not passed on the burden to somebody else what's it over here i'm reading from here again as regards the relevance of the fact that price remained the same before and after capital goods were imported the larger bench also clarified that uniformity in price before and after assessment does not lead to inevitable conclusion that duty burden has not been passed as such uniformity may be due to various reason your this cost is increased some expenses have come down and there may be market which is influencing the price of the product at times you have to go with the market irrespective of the fact whatever expense done from your side in fact nowadays it's, it's other way around if you want to enter into a market your selling price should be lowest of all of your other competitors so that buyers come to you and view of this the contention of x y z limited are liable to be rejected on this ground what has been clear it clear, said over here the application will get rejected and that amount will go to consumer welfare fund am i very clear am i very clear can i go ahead is the first point clear first question clear can i go ahead refund of duty paid on raw material which has been captively consumed am i clear to you is this clear can i go ahead okay 